You unlock this door with the key of imagination. Beyond it is another dimension, a dimension of sound, a dimension of sight, a dimension of mind. You're moving into a land of both shadow and substance, of things and ideas. You've just crossed over into the Twilight Zone. Margaret? Margaret? Yes, Miss Alva? Come here, please. I'll be right there. Now, it's important. The dishes are all done. Do you need something? It's getting late. It's not that late, is it? We can play a game of cards if you like. A storm is coming. Is it? Well, that's what they said on the radio. A very serious one. Hmm. <laughs> the sky was clear this afternoon. Nevertheless, I think you should be getting home. Well, I'll just fix your cup of tea then. I'd like to be in my bed. So early? Well, I'm feeling a bit tired. Well, as you wish. Do you have your shawl? It doesn't do much good. Ugh. <sighs> Awfully chilly this evening. I'll raise the thermostat. Ah, there's the rain. Oh, I hope the roof holds. Why wouldn't it? You had it re-shingled last year. Here we go. I'll turn the bed down for you. Now. Take my hands up and out of your chair. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Margaret. I don't know what I'd do without you. Oh, you do just fine. You'll be walking again soon. Have you been doing your exercises like Dr. Mays told you? It's no use. These legs simply don't work anymore. Oh, Margaret, I'll never leave this house again. Now you stop that. There's a big, wide world out there. Places to go and people to see. The only way I'll see them is if they come here. And there's not much chance of that. Most everyone I know has passed on. Surely not. You have a phone right next to the bed. Call some friends. Keep in touch. Oh, it's been too long. I don't know if the numbers work anymore. Of course they do. If they don't, talk to Miss Finch at the telephone exchange. She'll look them up for you. Now, wait right here. I'll get your pills and a nice cup of hot tea. Hurry, Margaret, the rain. You'll never get home. Oh, don't you worry about me, Miss Elva. I'll be back with your tray. Oh, my. Such a terrible, terrible storm. Miss Elva Keene who lives alone on the outskirts of Linden Fleet in Maine. Her world has shrunk to the size of the small house she owns and may never leave again. For some years, the pattern of Miss Keene's life has consisted of sitting in her wheelchair or lying in her feather bed, knitting, reading books, listening to the radio, eating modest portions of food, napping, taking her medication, and waiting. For exactly what, she's not sure. Perhaps for something different to happen. Something small but significant that will make all the difference. Miss Keene doesn't know it yet, but her time of waiting has just ended. For something different is about to happen. By way of an unexpected phone call in the middle of a stormy night. A telephone call routed directly through the twilight zone. And now, The Twilight Zone and our story, Night Call, starring Marriott Hartley, with Stacy Keach as your narrator. Oh! Oh! Someone calling? At this hour? Oh. Hello? I I'm sorry I didn't hear... The thunder. 
Hello? Hello? Who is on the line, please? Oh, no one, apparently. How odd. Perhaps I was dreamy. Hello? Hello? I can't hear you. If you wish to speak to me, please say something. Or I'll hang up. Hello? 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 Just a moment, Margaret. You're up early this morning. Oh, what is the matter with this phone? You're trying to make a call? No one's picking up at the switchboard. Well, I imagine they're pretty busy this morning, what with the storm and all. I suppose. Phone company, Miss Finch speaking. Ready for your tea? Uh, just a moment. Miss Finch? This is Elva Keene. Yes, Miss Keene. Can I help you? Oh, I, I certainly hope so. Oh, I'll do my best. What is the problem? Uh, last night, uh, about 2 a.m., my telephone rang. Oh? I answered it, but no one spoke, and I didn't hear any receiver hanging up. Just silence. Is that right? Or, or rather, a... A crackling sound, like wind and rain. That would be electrical noise, a faulty line, most likely. The same thing happened a few moments later. Well, I'll tell you, Miss Keene, that storm last night about ruined our service. We've been flooded with complaints about fallen wires and bad connections. I'd say you're pretty lucky that your telephone is working at all. Oh, you would, would you? Yes, ma'am. And would you say, then, that someone was trying to call me, but that the connection was washed out? That's as good an explanation as any, Miss Keene. But who would have tried to call me in the middle of the night? I'm sorry. I wish I could be of more help, but the way things are right now... Uh, is it likely to happen again? I really couldn't say. It might. Were you expecting a call? Not at that hour. It depends on what's causing it to happen, of course. Could you find out... If there's a breakdown somewhere, our crews will find it and repair it. And what am I to do in the meantime? If it does happen again, you just call me and I'll run a special check on it. Will you do that? Well, if that's your only suggestion. I'm afraid it is. I'll be here in any event. Well, goodbye, Miss Keene. Goodbye. All taken care of? I'm not sure. I'll start your tea. And then we'll move into the living room. Would you like that? Margaret. Yes, Miss Alva. Did you call me? When? Last night. At two in the morning? No, ma'am, not me. Oh. I thought you might have tried to check on me because of the storm. But then uh, I don't pay you for nights, do I? Tea? No, thank you. Have you taken your pill? Yes. Don't I always? Never missed one yet. The highlight of my morning. The mail should be here by now. Shall I check the box? Why don't you do that? With multiple injuries in the five-car pileup, so take caution while driving in these slick conditions. The storms are still very strong in the north and northeast, while the rest of the city, the severe storms seem to have passed over. Several areas were still without power last night due to fallen wires. 
workmen restored electrical service shortly before dawn. Here's your mail, Miss Alva. Thank you. Anything interesting? Oh, an advertisement. Another advertisement. The light bill, the telephone bill, of course. No personal letters. You heard from your sister a few days ago, didn't you? Oh, that was weeks ago, Margaret. Three weeks and two days, to be exact. Has it been that long? Yes, that long. Nobody cares whether I live or die. Oh, sure they do, Miss Elva. You don't understand. Don't I? You can't. You have no idea what it's like to be alone. But you're not alone. I come by during the day. Yes, you do. And for that, I thank you. But it's been so long since I've had a real visitor. I mean, someone who came of their own accord. Oh, now don't talk like that. You're going to get yourself into a mood. I'm sure lots of people are thinking about you this very moment. Who? You'll hear from someone any time now. Just be patient a while longer. Wouldn't you like to work on your knitting? All right. Can I get you anything else? Not just now. Well, start thinking about what you want to eat tonight. I'll make a list and go to the store later. For now, I better get the dishes washed. Hello? Hello? Margaret? Yes? Come here, quickly. Is that the phone? See, someone's calling you now. Take the receiver. What for? I want you to listen. If you like. Well? There's no one on the line, Miss Elva. Just listen. See if you can hear whether anyone's there. There's nothing. But you heard it ring, didn't you? Yes. Tell me if someone hangs up. Not a thing. The line's dead. Wait. What's the matter? Oh, well, it doesn't matter. I'll call Miss Finch and have them check on it. You really think that's necessary? Yes, I think it's necessary. Am I to suffer calls like that at all hours of the day and night? Calls like what? There was no call. Then why did it ring? It was a mistake, that's all. How could it be a mistake? Someone must have dialed my number. Not if it's a malfunction. Something's wrong with the equipment. I'm sure they'll... What are you doing? Reporting it. Phone company, Miss Finch speaking. Hello, Miss Finch. I thought you should know. I've received another one of those calls. There we go. I peeled you an apple. And here are two of your favorite cookies to go with your tea. Can you think of anything else? No, no, I'm sure that will do. All comfy? Ah, perhaps one more pillow. Certainly. Here you are. Thank you, Margaret. You go to so much trouble. It's no trouble at all. I wish you could understand how degrading it is for me to ask for help. I've always been able to take care of myself. Oh, now. We get along just fine, you and me. We're friends. I don't have friends anymore. Don't be silly. You have more friends out there than you realize. Oh, I wish that were true. You'll see. You'll hear from them. And meanwhile, don't fret about those phone calls. Don't give them another thought. I'll try not to. It was the storm, I'm sure of it. Perhaps you're right. Whatever the trouble was, the repairman have fixed it by now. But just to be sure, why don't you keep the receiver off the hook and then you won't be bothered? Oh, that's a good suggestion. You know, I have an extra television set, a portable. I could bring it over if you like. No need. 
There's hardly any reception out here. There is if you put up an antenna or connect with the cable system. That costs money. Besides, there's nothing I care to see. Suit yourself. But if you change your mind, let me know. You should be getting home. It is getting late. Let's see. You have your pills, your knitting. Would you like a book? Uh, I'll be going right to sleep. Good night then, Miss Keene. See you in the morning. Yes, in the morning. What should I do? Nothing. Just as I thought. I won't speak. I'll hang it up and then leave it off the hook. Yes? Who's there? Who is it? Hello? What is making this sound? Is anybody there? Anybody at all? Who is on the line? Who is it? Who? Hello? What is that? Please, please leave me alone. Here we are, your favorite spot in the living room. Not today, please. Well, where then, Miss Elva? Away from the window. If you're going to knit, you'll need the light. I don't care to knit just now. Very well. And close the curtains. Close them? I just opened them. That's the way I want it. But look what a lovely day it is. With the curtains drawn, there'll be hardly enough light for anything. Please do as I say, Margaret. I'm not feeling well. Why? What's wrong? My nerves. I hardly slept last night. You didn't? Not a wink. Why on earth? What happened? Do I have to tell you? No. Not the telephone. Yes. At all hours, over and over again. You're sure? Indeed I am. The sound is so loud in this house it hurts my ears. Well, we can't have that. And this time, he spoke to me. He didn't. Margaret, I simply can't bear it. Shush, dear, don't you worry. We'll do something about that right now. We'll call Miss Finch and clear it up. She won't listen. Of course she will. She doesn't take me at all seriously. Well then, I'll have a word with her. We can't have you going without your sleep. Operator. Is that Miss Finch? It is. This is Margaret Phillips, Miss Keene's private nurse. Oh, yes. How are you? I'm fine, but Miss Keene isn't doing so well. Oh, sorry to hear that. Why haven't you fixed her line yet? I've told her we'll repair it as soon as... It's gone beyond that. Now someone is speaking to her. She can't sleep at all. If Miss Keene's health should be disturbed any further, the phone company will be held responsible. Now, just a minute. Give me the phone. Here she is now. She'll tell you herself. Miss Finch. Yes, Miss Keene. There's a voice on the phone. A voice? It says one word over and over. Hello. 
It doesn't sound normal. It sounds distorted. Are you sure it's a voice? What else could it be? Well, static on the line, sometimes... It, it was someone, I tell you. The same someone who kept listening to me say hello over and over again without answering back. The same one who made those horrible noises. What kind of noise? I don't know. That's why I'm calling you. It must stop immediately. A voice, you say? Was it a man or a woman? I couldn't be sure. So you have no idea... I tell you there is no way of knowing. It could be either. And you're positive it wasn't someone on your party line? Oh, don't you think I know the people on my party line? Of course, Miss Keene, of course. Well, I'll have a man come out as soon as possible. The crews are still pretty busy, what with the damaged lines and all from the storm, but I'll tell them to put a rush on it. And what am I to do if this person calls again? Hang up, Miss Keene. But whoever it is will only call back. And then I have to answer to stop the ringing. That's my best advice. It's either that or disconnect the line. No, no, you, you can't do that. What if there were an emergency? I have no way to call out. That's true. Then there isn't much choice. I suggest you talk to them. Try to find out more, get a name if you can. Do that and we'll have something to go on. We'll take immediate action, I promise you. But I don't wish to speak to them at all. Then I'm afraid there's nothing we can do. So you won't help me? We can't. It could be absolutely anyone. There's no way to know. I see. Then... Good day to you. What did she say? Not a word of help. It's obvious she doesn't believe me. Oh, I'm sure that's not true. As far as she's concerned, I'm just a nervous old biddy falling prey to my imagination. But she didn't actually say... Well, she'll find out differently. You all will, if it's not too late by then. Such talk. You're letting yourself get way too upset. Why don't we have some breakfast? Would you like that? No, I'm not hungry. In a while, then. We'll both have something. I'll leave the curtains drawn so you can catch up on your rest. Would you like a pillow for your back? Make sure they're completely drawn. But it's so dark in here. I can't afford the risk. What do you mean? Well, if someone's out there, he could be watching. Watching what? Me. Oh, nothing tastes right today, not even tea. That's not your fault. I'm feeling so out of sorts. Margaret? Margaret? <clears throat> That's all right. Stay where you are. You're entitled to a nap, too. There. That will stop it. I won't put it to my ear. I won't. But if I don't take the call, I'll never know who it is. Oh. All right, I'll leave it on the hook. And the next time it rings, I'll force myself to speak to them and find out what they're up to. Oh, oh. Hello? Hello? Who is this? Who's calling, please? Hello. Who's calling? I've had quite enough. Stop this at once. No. Why do you keep saying that? Can't you hear me? Hello. Hello. Margaret! Margaret! <clears throat> 
Margaret! Uh, yes? Oh, oh, Miss Miss Alva, I was just resting my eyes. Is, is everything all right? No, it is not. Mm, then what... The telephone! Oh, D- did it ring? I thought I heard something. It's a man. I'm sure of it. How do you know? Because he just called again. I heard the tone of his voice. It was uh, deep and hoarse. Like there was something wrong with him. What did he want? I don't know. Then how? He just keeps saying hello over and over. That's all he says. Hello. 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 Now you've got to stop this, Miss Keene. I've got to stop. I'm not the one who... You're working yourself into a state over... Over nothing. I didn't say that. You didn't have to. You were going to say it. Now, Miss Keene, I was not. I think I'd better put you back in your bed so you can... I don't want to be put in my bed. I want to know who this terrible man is who keeps calling. What did Miss Finch tell you? She told you it was probably a bad connection, didn't she? The telephone wires are still wet from the rain. It was not the connection. It's a man. I'm not arguing, Miss Keene, but if he keeps on saying hello... That's all he says. Then obviously he can't hear you. And that would be because of a bad connection. Doesn't that make sense? No. He heard me. I know he heard me. He paused each time and waited for me to speak. I don't know what he wants. Then why don't you hang up on him, Miss Selva? You don't have to listen. Just hang up. Is that so hard to do? No, I've tried that. But the voice. Hello. Over and over. Hello. 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 Then do this. Take it off the hook. There. Now he can't call you, right? Nobody can call me. Leave it that way just for the time being, until all this funny business is over. It will be the same on the extension. And then if you decide to make a call, all you have to do is hold down the arm for a second. Isn't that right, Miss Keene? Miss Keene? But why is he calling me? Why would he? Can you tell me that? Why? He wants something from me, but I can't imagine what it is. Oh, I can't bear that sound. Try putting a pillow over it. Uh, There. No! Hello. Hello? Miss Finch, the problem is getting worse. Oh, hello, Miss Keene. I tell you I won't have it. Have you tried leaving it off the hook? No, it doesn't do any good. He just waits for me to hang up so he can call back. I left the receiver off last night, but I can't do it anymore. Even when I bury it under a pillow, the noise keeps me awake. I haven't had any sleep in 24 hours. Then perhaps, Miss Keene, we should disconnect it after all. No... I am an invalid, Miss Finch. I must have telephone service in case of emergency. I'm sure you must. Now, I want the line checked. Do you hear? This terrible thing must stop right away. 
All right, Miss Keene, I'll put a man on it right away, and this time we'll get to the bottom of it. Swear to it. I give you my word. Oh, good. Thank you. You don't know what this means to me. I'll call you as soon as we find out the problem. You'll see to it, no matter what it takes. Of course. First thing, we'll give you an answer before noon. Thank you. Don't you worry now. Oh, bless you. That's what we're here for. Your play? What? Pick up your cards, Miss Elva. This is what we need, you'll see. A nice game of canasta. Oh. Yes. Now, it's your play. What is the matter with that girl? Hmm? She promised faithfully that a man would check on it today. The afternoon is almost over and no one's been by. Maybe he doesn't have to come by, Miss Elva. Why wouldn't he? If the problem is somewhere else, with one of the telephone poles, for example. Ah. Uh. Well, I suppose that could be true, but if she promised she'd let me know. Look at your cards. Did you get a good hand this time? Oh. That'll be her, don't you think? Want me to answer it? Oh, yes, yes, if you would. Hello? No, this is Margaret Phillips. Would you like to speak with her? Who is it? Just a moment. You see, it's Miss Finch. Now everything will be fine. Oh, yes? About those calls you say you've been receiving, Miss Keene. Say I've been receiving? Why don't you believe? We sent a man out to trace them. I have his report here. And? He says he followed your line through all its connections. He found the problem. Well, what is it? A fallen wire on the edge of town. Fallen wire? Yes, Miss Keene. The weather blew it free of the pole. I don't understand. One end was on the ground, so no signal at all was getting through. Are you telling me that there were no calls? I'm sorry, but there's no way anyone could have called from that location, Miss Keene. I tell you, a man called me. There must be a phone there. There must be some way for him to call me. Miss Keene. The wire is lying on the ground, unattached. Tomorrow our crew will put it back up and you won't have any further trouble. There must be a way that someone got through. But there is no one out there. No one at all. Out? Where? Miss Keene. It's the cemetery. <gasps> oh. Miss Keene? Are you there? What is it, Miss Elva? Why have you dropped the phone? Will you tell me what's wrong? Miss Keene, for heaven's sake, what is it? Here we are. Valley View Cemetery. Are you sure you want to get out of the car? Yes. I wish you'd tell me why you decided to come all this way. Miss Keene, this isn't good for you. If you hadn't made such a to-do about it, I'd never have taken you in the first place. Why won't you answer? What can there possibly be out here for you to see? Get my chair from the back seat, please. Very well. Have it your way. Careful, now. Up and out. Here's a blanket for your legs. Though I can't imagine why you'd want to. Miss Elva, what are you looking at? Over there. You mean inside the grounds? On the other side of the gate. All right. We'll have to steer clear of the power lines, though. Well, there's a loose telephone wire hanging down. I can't see where it touches the ground. Where are we going? The first row on the left. About halfway down, as I recall. That's where the wire ends. I knew it. Here? Here. And we better not go any closer. It's fallen directly onto a grave. Right by an old headstone. 
What's the name? Brian Douglas. And the date of birth and death? More than 50 years ago. Oh, the poor young man. Only 27. I knew it. Miss Selva. It's him. Who? It's him. Brian. Oh, Brian. You knew him? Brian, my fiancé. You're... He died a week before we were to be married. Oh, Miss Alva, I didn't know. We were in a car together. I insisted on driving. I was always insisting on things, telling him what I wanted, dominating him in my way. And he always did what I said, always. I lost control of the car, steered it right into a tree. Brian went through the windshield. He was cut to pieces. I was left crippled, and now he's trying to reach me, I'm sure of it. Don't you see? He's trying to reach me. So many years out here alone, in the sun, in the wind, in the rain. And now, at last, I can talk to him. I won't be lonely anymore. Would you like more covers on the bed? No, Margaret, I'm perfectly fine. I can plump up your pillows for you. That's not necessary. I can't leave you like this. I'll be all right. Good night. But... Good night, Margaret. You call me if you need me now. I will. I'll be home all night. Yes, yes, Margaret, good night. Hope you sleep well. Now then, you may call me any time at all. I'm waiting. Oh, this is ridiculous. Now that I want you to call. Brian? Brian? Are you there? Can you hear me? It's Elva. Elva! Oh, Brian. Brian, my dear. Brian, where are you? Where are you, Brian? Can't you hear me at all? Brian? Are you there, Brian? If you are, please speak. It's Elva. Elva, you can speak to me now. I, I, I didn't know it was you. I thought, Brian, please, I know you're there. It's Elva. Talk to me, Brian, please. I beg you. Not this time. I didn't understand. I only meant... Oh, Brian. Brian, speak to me. No, no, Brian, don't go. Don't leave me here. I, I didn't know it was you. I didn't understand. I tell you, there were so many things I didn't understand. I... I... I didn't mean to say. Brian, please. Please. Oh, please. <laughs> No! Oh. Oh. According to the Bible, God created heaven and earth. But it is every man's prerogative and every woman's to create their own particular and private hell. Case in point, Miss Elba Keen, who in every sense has made her own bed and now must lie in it. Sadder but wiser, by dint of a rather painful lesson in responsibility, 
Transmitted from the Twilight Zone. Hi, this is Carl Amari, producer of the Twilight Zone radio dramas. I'd like to take a moment to tell you about our official website at twilightzoneradio.com where you'll get the latest news and information on these Twilight Zone radio dramas. Plus, at TwilightZoneRadio.com, you can digitally download three free episodes or any of our episodes for only $1.95 each. In this age of ever-changing technology, we've decided to make these episodes instantly available to you by making the Twilight Zone radio dramas a digital download-only series. This means that this series will no longer be offered on CD. The CD collections at our website are now being offered, while supplies last, at buy one, get one free. So be sure to get your favorites before they're sold out. Be sure to visit us often, and I'll see you in the zone. Night Call. Starring Marriott Hartley with Stacey Keach as your narrator was adapted for radio by Dennis Etchison and written for The Twilight Zone by Richard Matheson. Heard in the cast were Sarah Wellington, Meg Falcon, and Doug James. The producers of The Twilight Zone wish to thank CBS Enterprises and the Rod Serling Estate for making this series possible. This copyrighted radio series is produced and directed by Carl Amari for Falcon Picture Group and Westwood One. Sound design and custom Foley effects for The Twilight Zone by Cerny American creatives Bob Benson, Greg Lee, Michael Slaybach, and Matt Sorrow. To learn more about The Twilight Zone radio dramas and to contact us, visit our official website at twilightzoneradio.com. Doug James speaking.